Um, hello everyone, my name is Victoria. I'm a data analyst at H uh, HTA Hive Health. And uh, my project uh, is on analyzing uh, time intervals from uh, marketing authorization to uh, HTA with Shiny R. Uh, the motivation, um, the reason why we should study these timelines is that first of all, we want patients um, to have predictable, more predictable timelines uh, for getting access to new treatment options. But also it will help us to evaluate regulatory bodies' performance and learn from uh, international comparison. And just in general, the more transparent uh, HTA processes are, the better. Um, in, my, uh, in my project, I focus on three uh, main um, milestone in drug development, which is the start of a clinical trial, which will inform HTA decision, its marketing authorization, uh, both initial and extensions, uh, and HTA decisions. And uh, I want to spend some time talking about the data and the ways how you can generate this type of data uh, using R. Uh, clinical trials data was sourced from uh, clinicaltrials.gov website, and I found this um, package ctrials.gov, uh, which allows you uh, to connect to their database and with just three lines of code to extract uh, all the up-to-date uh, data about clinical trials. And you will get up to five, like almost 500,000 um, rows data set in your environment, uh, which, is, uh, which is quite cool. It, it, looks, like, it looks like that. Uh, so it has quite a lot of information, like general information about clinical trials. And uh, for this project, I was mostly interested in uh, the start date. Um, this marketing authorization data, it wasn't uh, as straightforward. And uh, for example, um, European Medicines Agency, they published uh, um, the Excel data set with all approved drugs. Uh, it's quite comprehensive, so it has a lot of details. It has, um, it has information about like orphan designation, types of approval, uh, it has indications, but the problem with this data set is, is if we search, for example, uh, Kitschuda, it has just one row, so it also has a lot of information, but it gives us just the initial marketing authorization date and then the latest approval, and all the indications, all, uh, all extensions, they all in one place. So we can't really use this data set for uh, my project because we need each individual extension uh, to link it to uh, each individual HTA outcome for this drug. So uh, for marketing authorizations, uh, we had to use different uh, approach and uh, this approach is my, um, mainly was based on uh, different web scraping techniques. And I will talk a little bit about web scraping um, on an example of uh, HAS, which is uh, the French HTA um, uh, agency. And um, the reason I wanted to talk about it is that when I, um, when I googled how to do web scraping, um, it's usually about Python, they, they recommend you to do it with Python, and my colleagues who are Python guys, they were quite skeptical about me um, uh, scraping uh, with R, but it turned out to work absolutely fine, and I just wanted to let um, our community know that you can web scrape with R. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> HS website looks uh, like that, this free screenshots, and the idea of web scraping is that you um, kind of go deeper and deeper. Uh, and the first page, a web page, is um, uh, it's like a database, so it's basically uh, repeating blocks of um, HTML, um, chunks of HTML code. So you can just, so your scraping function will be like a loop function. Uh, and then the idea with web scraping is that it's HTML is hierarchical language, so you just need to write down, write your way down to each element you want to scrape. So I want to scrape a uh, link to go deeper, and then uh, I want to, uh, in like next page where I can see uh, history for all history uh, for the drug, I can uh, access uh, more information, and then access to of access final page. And you usually start web scraping with just uh, mimicking that uh, it's not just you are very excited about French HTA, but it's like multiple people uh, who are trying to access the website. And then you write this uh, loop functions, which just go through each page 
and for each uh, HTML uh, chunk. So even um, with this methods, you can there are other different way, uh, methods you can get the date like uh, parsing XML and other uh, database extracts. But even when you get um, this data, it still you still have to match it for this project. You have to match uh, each mar marketing authorization to each HTA outcome and also clinical trials data, and it, it's quite challenging. It's it turned out to be cheeky. We're still working on a solution, and by solution I mean some sort of automatic solution. And that's why my current data set I'm presenting today is not as big as I want it to, to, to be, uh, and it covers um, uh, up to 2018 for now. So it's quite challenging. <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> yeah. Uh, the data data set looks like that. Um, I wanted to just mention here that I. Uh, uh, originally, it was coded just like uh, zero, 01, 1, 2, 3, but I decided to um, name, uh, gi give meaningful names to all these categories inside the data set, uh, just uh, to kind of not expand a shiny code um, even more. So this is a little shiny just to, uh, for data exploration. Uh, just yeah. Oh. Okay. So just uh, to give you an idea of, of what, uh, how it looks like, so we can see that uh, the majority uh, of our outcomes uh, are listed with restrictions, so some restrictions for reimbursement. Uh, you can just see it by uh, agency name, uh, by therapeutic area, by um, type of marketing authorization approval, orphan designation. We can also see uh, by outcome results, uh, also by orphan designation, uh, and so so we can also um, check um, time if we want. So just just to uh, explore this data set, and um, uh, the the approach I used to analyze uh, this time intervals is using kaplan mayer method. Um, and um, uh, time between events was in days, and uh, I compared um, survival curves using log rank test and also median survival times. And about censoring, uh, I didn't, I wasn't uh, sure how I should approach it because this data data is, uh, the study is uh, retrospective. All the observations are completed, so I didn't really know what should I sensor, but I felt that I kind of have to sensor something for survival analysis. So I decided to let user to decide if they want to sensor or not. And if sensor, then probably rejections for now for this current data set. Um, yes, and the, the main dashboard uh, looks like that. So you can uh, choose uh, type of analysis. Uh, is it from marketing authorization to HTA, but you can also assess um, uh, from clinical trial to marketing at, uh, authorization or from uh, trial to HTA. Uh, you can compare agencies. Uh, so for example, mm -hmm. the most interesting is probably uh, Germany and NICE. So we see that the difference is quite significant. Um, um, we can compare um, disease areas, for example, um, rare disease and um, infectious uh, disease. Also, uh, the difference is quite significant. Um, or about sen censoring is, yeah, so you can decide, do you want to censor rejections or no? The difference <coughs> is not very significant, but um, so I I walk through uh, f uh, you through code quickly. So I used uh, for survival analysis. I used uh, survival and survival uh, minor package. Uh, UI is quite standard, so I'll skip it. Um, I start my shiny code with uh, filtering um, data set. So according to what uh, user selected, then I start Kaplan Meier analysis. Uh, I retrieve the filtered data. Uh, then I check if uh, uh, censoring should be removed. If uh, s uh, if user decided not to censor, I just um, in my column uh, which approved, I, I just make all uh, values equal to one. 
uh, then I uh, determine uh, stratification variables. Um, then I uh, choose which variable I use as a, a timeline. Is it uh, MA to HTA, child to MA, and so on. Uh, and then I construct the formula for uh, survival analysis, which I will then uh, fit, uh, and I will then I, uh, uh, fit the data into this formula. Uh, then I calculate uh, median survival times, and um, according to uh, if there was certification or not, um, then I return the results, and then I do the survival plots. Um, and uh, and text which give me uh, which gives me survival time, median survival times and results of uh, log rank test. Um, so the, it's uh, I'm still working on this project and the next uh, big step is to complete my data set because as I said it's quite a uh, cheek and probably is the most uh, the hardest part of this project. But also I consider adding uh, additional drug development time steps. Um, and potentially I will uh, analyze uh, inference of each factor on uh, time, uh, timeline analysis and hopefully we'll be able to do some predictive analytics like how we can uh, predict uh, um, um, what inference like how, um, using inputs um, user um, select uh, what can be um, expected um, timeline to uh, HTA. So thank you for your attention. Um, I guess it's not the like HTA itself project or like health economic <laughs> modeling, but I can imagine uh, this type of shiny dashboard can be used with clinical trials data. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Victoria. Very good timekeeping as well. So <laughs> let, let's start with a question from the room. Can you see that one in the chat? So NICE is a special API mm -hmm. you have to pay for. Did you encounter any issues with that? So specifically for NICE, NICE provide data sets, uh, which are quite comprehensive. Uh, but this thing about web scraping is that um, it's, it's basically they, they, they give you all the data, they publish it, so you can do it manually. So you can just spend a lot of hours on collecting this data, or you can just web scrape it, and the result is this, is the same. You get the data. Uh, plus, they have uh, we checked uh, with um, uh, with the company about this legal uh, restrictions, and it seems like uh, it's about like commercial use. So if you just sell this data, it's not great. But if you use it for research, then it's absolutely fine. Okay. Um, any, any questions in the room before we go back to the virtual room here? Um, so I'm super interested to see this sort of analysis. I assume pharma companies are doing it in the background um, to see their success rate and risk management. It's really interesting to see this post. Um, so one application you could think about for web scraping is the new joint clinical assessments that you are acquiring. They are now require you to um, search the 27 EU HTA databases for where the drug is relevant, plus have a uh, NICE and a PVAC, etc. Um, so I think web scraping is going to be a really vital for systematic literature reviews in the future. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we think about. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I, I was going to ask part of the question, but uh, a follow-up question was: Are you planning to publish any analysis on this? Because it's well, really the, interesting. Thank you. Uh, well. Depends how good the results are, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, once we finish with collecting the data, uh, and I think it also depends on the uh, how well will be my model for analyzing inference of each factor. Will be I will uh, if I will able uh, if I will be able to kind of make the model good. So I just don't know it yet. But if, if, if everything is fine, then probably I, I would like to. Um, right, one more question in the room. Before. Is your just an observation on technology? It's not just the FRRs. I think actually the same amount of people that you need to analyze to get to the JPA is probably a really fundamental thing that that would be really helpful for, because we need to understand in advance like, the timeline. So mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>
Do you, do you want to try the second question? Uh, about clinical trials. Well, it's the, they have a very comprehensive database, and usually when you look in the HTA uh, report, they mention the NCT number, so you can just in this data, uh, you can just match it. So uh, I can see it's it's in most <coughs> cases uh, that's enough. Uh, I found I uh, I saw trials which uh, which don't have NCT uh, unique number and they just registered in European, just like a European uh, clinical trial. So for them, it, it it's not enough. Uh, but yes, for like in 95, 99% of cases, clinical trial dot gov is enough. Plus they give you this data, which is nice of them. So really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how do you handle conditional reimbursement within your analysis at the moment? Uh, so it's uh, we have this category list with restrictions, which is mm -hmm. conditional reimbursement, and it's uh, it's coded as approved. So in my uh, survival model, just one. Um, yes, for now, it's just 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 this. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe I don't know. Maybe I should do. S I know is there like another way for survival model to, uh, to like cheat? Uh, yeah, this type of the reason I was interested is because the reason Germany might be faster for often diseases in particular is because they should say yes initially and then come back and look at it later. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. maybe, <laughs> but uh, I was told that Germany just had they they mm -hmm. define this. They have to uh, evaluate the drug mm -hmm. during six months, so mm -hmm. they just have to. So that's why they do it fast. And NICE apparently doesn't have to do it fast, so that's why they don't do it fast. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does yeah. that like a multi-state model? Mm, <coughs> maybe, but so far I just decided to make yeah. it as simple and descriptive. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe I was, um, I was considering, I considered the like um, mm. competing uh, outcome, but it was, <laughs> But like competing, I'm not sure that this the can. You should think about outcomes as competing events. Like it's just not the way I think about it. So I decided to keep it simple. But I will definitely explore more advanced options uh, later. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see you plan to final recommendation mm -hmm. as well as the initial. Yeah, thank Very you. Very cool. Uh, Tarkin, last mm -hmm. question. Uh, yeah, uh, great, really great work. Um, I was just wondering if. Yeah, so um, because my company works mostly with HTA data, we have, so we just focus on data which is around HTA. And so uh, for clinical trials, uh, so how, how we how I identified mm -hmm. clinical trials um, I want to uh, include in this data set, which is basically what, the, uh, what they used in HTA for like as, as like the main informing trial. And that's why we kind of, and that's how I just link them. But I, I consider adding like, uh, like a phase one clinical trial to kind of as an additional uh, time step for this uh, timeline. But yes, this the trial I used David was the main trial which informed HTA decision. So that, that, that was all. so it was kind of back from from H, HTA to clinical trial. Speaking of the Uh, yes, and uh, well, actually, uh, there are many trials which don't really, th which are not completed by the date of HD outcome because they can be like mm -hmm. ten years long mm -hmm. because they assess like the second gen for and safety and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really matter for HD decision. So that's why start date seems fine. Great stuff. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.